हेलो एवरीवन एंड वेलकम टू द ट्वेंटी पार्ट ऑफ दिस एनवायरमेंटल साइंस एक्सपेक्टेड क्रैश कोर्स सीरीज इन विच वी आर डिस्कसिंग यूनिट थ्री ऑफ एनवायरमेंटल बायोलॉजी सो दिस इज द ट्वेंटी पार्ट एंड यू कैन चेक ऑल द लिस्ट ऑफ द रेसन फ्रॉम द डिस्क्रिप्शन बिलो लेट स्टार्ट टूडे वीडियो द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज द लार्ज स्केल फाइलेटिक चेंज ओवर जियोलॉजिकल टाइम एज वेल एज एक्सटिंक्शन ऑफ टैक्सा within such group is known as what so this is the question from genetics part and here the correct option will be option number c macroevolution yes so when there is a large scale change over geological time and as well as the extinction of some taxa that is called as macroevolution let's move on to our second question the second question is the assertion and reasoning kind of question the assertion statement states if the natality is greater than the mortality it leads to population explosion and the reason given is the scientific study of various species of human population is called as demography so you have to choose which of the following options is correct so here the correct option will be option number 2 Yes both the statements of assertion and reasoning are true but reasoning is the not correct explanation of the assertion statement so let's see what is it about so that's is natality that is the birth rate if it is greater than the death rate that is mortality obviously it will lead to population explosion and also the scientific study of various species of human population is called demography that is mortality natality sex ratio all comes under demography but this is not giving the correct explanation of the assertion that to why the natality is greater and mortality is lesser the population will explode the next question is which of the following is not a vestigial structure and here the correct option will be option number d yes the nictitating membranes in humans which is found in the eyes is a vestigial structure as well as the pelvic bones in snake and appendix in humans are vestigial structure so these structures are the organs which were present in our ancestors as functional form but now they are of no use but nails are not the vestigial structure because nail is made up of keratin protein which helps in providing protection to the fingertip the next question is the ultraviolet radiations are lethal due to the inactivation of which of the following so we all know that uv rays are lethal but you should know why they are lethal and what they inactivate so here the correct option will be option number d yes this uv radiation they break our dna so they damage and inactivate our protein nucleic acids and pigments found in our body so that's why they are lethal in nature Moving on to the next question. The next question is who proposed the theory of catastrophism? So this question is based upon the theories for the origin of life different theories have been given. And here the correct option will be option number A. Yes, Cuvier and Orbigny proposed this theory of catastrophism. So this word catastrophe means huge or disastrous event so that is large disastrous event so according to this catastrophism theory a fresh origin of life after each catastrophic event that resulted in complete annihilation that is destruction or non existence of all living beings led to the origin of life next move on to the next question the next question is the genetic divergence permitted by geographic isolation is called as what so we have to select which is the correct option and here the correct option will be option number c allopatric speciation so let's see what this speciation is about so first of all speciation is a lineage splitting event that produces two or more spe separate species so two or more different species are produced from a single species that is called as speciation so in allopatric speciation you can see here 
a barrier formation takes place. So here, due to the barrier formation, new species are formed after isolation. Whereas in case of peripatric speciation, a new niche is entered in isolated niche. That's why a new species is produced. Similarly, in parapetric speciation, what happens is the speciation takes place due to the adjacent niche with new species. So this happens when the adjacent niche enters and new species are produced. Similarly, the sympatric type of speciation happens when genetic polymorphism is seen within the species, which results in the formation of different species within the same population. Let's move to our next question. The next question is more number of alternative organisms at different tropic level leads to what? So you have to think this is very basic of ecology. So here the correct option will be option number D both B and C. Yes. If we are having more number of alternative organism at different tropic level then it will lead to more stable ecosystem as well as more complex ecosystem. For example if you can see if we are having one carnivore that is tiger and which is relying upon one herbivore that is cattle then it is less stable. So if our carnivore is having more options such as deer or any other herbivores then the ecosystem is more stable as it will have more options of feeding. The next question is that Tinea solium and Fasciola hepatica are the best examples of which of the following. So here the correct option will be option number B they are the examples of endoparasites. Yes so let's check it out what they are. So endoparasites are the parasites which are living inside the body of the host. So in Hindi that is Andar, so Andar which are living they are endoparasites and those who are living outside the body they are ectoparasites. So this Tinea psyllium is also, is also known as orc tapeworm or tapeworm. So they are located in the small intestine of humans because of the presence of hooks and suckers in them. The next example was Fasciola hepatica. So they are also known as the common liver fluke which you can see in this picture and this is a parasitic trematode a type of helminth. So they are coming from the phylum platyhelminths and it infects the liver of various mammals including humans and the disease caused by this fasciola hepatica is called as fasciolysis. So keep remember fasciolysis. Moving on to the next question. The next question is the larva of insects which attack the larva of other insects are known as what? So here the correct option will be option number C parasitoids. Yes, the larva of insects which attack the larva of other insects are called as parasitoids. They are special kinds of parasites. So guys that's all in this part of the video. I hope you like this. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe the channel. Stay tuned for further updates. And you can join me on Instagram on the link provided in the description below. Enviro Science Preparation.